Hello, everyone. This time again, I would like to take a ride on a time machine and travel back in time to the prehistoric age. This time we will visit the Permian period, or the Earth on the eve of the appearance of dinosaurs. Welcome to our channel, everyone. Many discoveries await you, including mysterious monsters and mammalian ancestors. Have we piqued your interest? Then let's get started. The World of the Permian Period The Permian, the last of the so-called Paleozoic Era, began 298.9 million years ago at the end of the Carboniferous Period and lasted 47 million years until 251.9 million years ago when it was replaced by the Triassic Era. The land surface of the Earth during the Carboniferous Period was a huge, very humid swamp overgrown with giant ferns, horsetails, and lycopodium, with the exception of the polar regions. The grassy areas were inhabited by giant insects several meters long and very large amphibians. The atmospheric oxygen concentration was the highest in the geologic history of the Earth at this time. By the beginning of the Permian, the Earth had undergone changes. Pangaea, the only supercontinent formed during the Carboniferous period still remained, but it was no longer a swamp. The single ecosystem of the Carboniferous, the fern forest was lost and divided into many islands with different conditions. During the Carboniferous period, the same flora and fauna were spread over almost the entire land area except for the polar regions, but by the Permian period, several biomes biome systems that differed from one another formed. For example, humid tropical rainforest covered the coast of the Great Tethys Sea, but gradually disappeared in north and south parts of the globe and was replaced by vast, hot and dry deserts. On the other hand, temperature forests and grasslands extended beyond the deserts. The polar caps were quite large in the early Permian, but they receded about 293 million years ago. Atmospheric oxygen levels declined to near-modern values, and the climate became drier and generally cooler. Giant arthropods became extinct or smaller. Amphibians were luckier. They still looked like monsters compared to today's amphibians, but the world was no longer their heaven. Another species appeared. The world ruled by Synapsida. First, the Permian period was the time when reptiles first flourished. Reptiles that emerged during the Carboniferous period survived the climatic changes much better than amphibians and arthropods. New climatic zones provided many opportunities for reptiles. There are many blank ecological niches into which they have been able to enter. There are several known groups that are considered rings between amphibians and reptiles. For example, the Reptilomorpha and Parareptilia. The larvae of the Seymoria morpha, which represents the Parareptilia, still retain their gills, but adults breathe only from their lungs. Among the Seymoria morpha, the giant lizards called Leptorophus and the quick Arecanerpeton are all studied. Authentic reptiles, or what experts called Eureptilia, are represented by Archosauria, the ancestor of dinosaurs and crocodilians and the Lepidosauria, the ancestors of snakes and lizards. While not much is known about the Lepidosauria of this period, it is believed that they were not only small, swift herbivores, but also carnivores and scavengers. Reptiles lived not only on land and in water, but also in the air. Wegeltosaurus glided among the trees in the Permian forest. This is one of the first flying vertebrates. The wings of modern birds are modified forelimbs, but the wings of Wegeltosaurus were elongated ribs. Permian Paraptilia and reptiles are very diverse, but experts group them together in a group called the Sauropsida. However, it was not the Sauropsida that were the true rulers of the land, but so-called the Synapsida and their subclass, the more evolved Theropsida. Synapsida were said to have been very numerous. Some resembled later dinosaurs, although they had little in common biologically. For example, Dimetrodon, 
One of the largest carnivores that grew up to 4 meters in length is believed to have had large spinous processes on its back, similar to that of Spinosaurus. Demetrodon, incidentally, is classified as the Pelicosauria, the root of Theropsida, that we are most interested in. The most dangerous of the Theropsida was the Gorgonops, which had strong, sharp fangs like those of a saber-toothed tiger. Some, such as the Gorgonops torvus, for example, had legs that did not spread laterally, but supported their bodies from below like modern mammals, giving them an advantage in speed. The suborder Gorgonops also included ferocious carnivores, such as Inostron sevia. This semi-aquatic animal, which could grow up to 3.5 meters in length, had huge, intimidating saber-toothed tusks like those of the saber tiger. Other synapsida and therapsida were preyed upon by Inostron sevia. For example, the equally large but plump and slow-moving herbivores, Scutosaurus. Another large species, the equally ferocious carnivorous Gorgonops, Rubigia also lived in the area that is now South Africa. Rubigia appears to have preyed on Dicynodon, including the plump-cheeked, slow-moving Aulacocephalodon. Rubigia, Inostrancevia, and the dinosaur-like Dianagoragon were among the largest terrestrial creatures. But the diversity of Gorgonops is not limited to its gigantic size. Some of them were medium-sized tiger-like carnivores, such as Slelandina, Pravosla Vlevia, and Lysinops. But there were also dangerous and ruthless predators. At the end of the Permian period, egg-laying, hair-covered, Cynodontia appeared among the Theropsida. Among them were small, ermine-like, Herbivores divinia and the 60-centimeter long Prochinosuchus. They were never top contenders in a world dominated by Gorgonops and its ilk, but they still had a special role to play among the creatures of the Earth. The World of Water As I mentioned earlier, the giant amphibians of the Carboniferous period had to cede vast areas of terrestrial territory to the Theropsida and Synapsida. That is not to say that the amphibians disappeared, they were comfortable in shallow water and swamps. It was precisely during this Permian period that the Prionosuchus, the largest known amphibian, appeared. This aquatic monster resembled the Gariel, a crocodilian rather than a modern newt or frog, and could grow to 9 meters in length. There were not so many fishes, but some of them were interesting species. For example, geneticists have calculated that during this very early Permian period, there lived an unknown organism that is believed to be a common ancestor of the modern lungfish. There were giant freshwater predators, called Xenacanthus, which looked somewhere between a shark and an eel and fed on small fish. The length of their bodies could reach 4 meters. The most curious fish of the Permian is the Helicoprion. Although it technically appeared in the Carboniferous, it was first discovered in the sedimentary layers of the Permian. Helicoprion teeth have a unique structure, resembling a circular saw disc. This disc, which experts call a spiral tooth, was found in the lower jaw of Helicoprion. How the spiral teeth were used in the diet is unknown. Paleontologists have speculated that the Helicoprions ploughed the bottom of the water and caught mollusks. Some now believe that the fish may have used their helical teeth to remove the main body of an ammonite from its shell or to seriously injure other fishes when preying on them. The End of the World the wondrous world of the Permian was remarkably similar to the modern world when compared to the Carboniferous, Triassic and Jurassic periods. This makes it all the more puzzling how the wrong path of giant reptilian domination was taken for so long, 186 million years after the end of the Permian. What happened? The Permian mass extinction, the most catastrophic event known to science, occurred. The mass extinction at the Cretaceous-Paleogene boundary, which ended the reign of the dinosaurs, is generally better known, but it is nothing compared to the Permian mass extinction. At the end of the Permian, the oceans were left in a catastrophic vacuum. Up to 96% of marine species disappeared. On land, 73% of vertebrates became extinct, and most of the species mentioned in this video were gone as well. Parareptilia became extinct, as did most of the Synapsida including the powerful Gorgonops. Earth has experienced five mass extinctions, but only the Permian-Triassic mass extinction was merciless, even to insects, with a total of 83% of species disappearing. 
How did this terrible biological cataclysm, which made Earth nearly a lifeless planet in just a few tens of thousands of years, occur? Scientists have yet to find an answer. One theory is that the Earth collided with a giant asteroid. Another theory is that a series of very active volcanic eruptions occurred at that time in the area that is now Siberia. A vast area of 2 million square kilometers, equivalent to the size of Mexico or Saudi Arabia, was covered with lava, and the ash released into the atmosphere blocked the sun for years, likely causing catastrophic climate change. Other theories suggest that the massive release of methane and the pollution of the Earth's atmosphere may have been the cause. In any case, the Permian mass extinction nearly wiped out the larger, more evolved Synapsida. Then, the green light was given to dinosaurs that had survived the extinction and successfully reproduced during the time of their ancestors. This concludes this video. Thank you all for watching. However, the song of the Synapsida is not over yet, and the most interesting chorus part is still to come. The little Quinodonts survived the extinction unlike their more powerful brethren. And by the Triassic period, they seem to have evolved into the first full-fledged mammals. Indeed, the Quinodonts had to spend three geologic ages living quietly on the fringes of the biosphere. But they survived, and got their revenge in the biosphere after the dinosaurs were gone. We humans are direct descendants of the Quinodonts of the Permian, and are distantly related to Dicynodons and Gorgonops. That human species rule the world today. But that's another story. I hope you all liked this video. If you like it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to share it on social networking sites so that as many people as possible will be interested in it. That's it for now. See you all again soon. Bye!